I'm just gonna become like plenty witchy ladies and just like I'm woo. I'm here for it. <laughs> I feel okay. So I am not much of a coffee drinker, but I feel like the closest I can get to is like hot cocoa, hot chocolate. And so I've got my mug here with hot chocolate in it for once because our friend from Ottawa sent me a total surprise parcel, just like a hey, it's winter time and you need cheering up and here's a warm like comfort parcel care package thing full of carnation hot chocolate powder mix. Okay. Different flavors as well because you can't get it over here. I, I have been craving the, the hot chocolate mixes from my childhood the entire time that I've been here. You'd think that like, oh yeah, you know, British chocolate, it's great. UK chocolate's great. And that like the hot chocolate mixes would be great. They don't do it for me. I don't know. I can't, I can't really, can't really describe it but i've been craving this and now i've got it in spades <laughs> like Excellent. buckets worth of carnation Excellent. hot chocolate powder well i mean i only drinks tea as we learned in this episode not lipton yeah, yeah. not lipton tea oh my goodness <laughs> i mean i could never so i'm with her there <laughs> i am channeling my emily a little bit i'm drinking sparkling water as per usual but in a glass i am using Ooh. proper beverage wear <laughs> instead of just drinking it straight out of the can so we are the belladonna watch club come get cozy with us while we dig into iconic shows and movies that one of us has never seen before so we are on season one episode nine of gilmore girls this is the episode called rory's dance so rory has a formal dance being thrown by her school which for the record is like no other school dance i've Scene. Um, <laughs> right. But this whole episode is centered around Rory trying to decide whether she's going to the dance and she's going to ask Dean to the dance. And then Lorelai ends up hurting her back while they're preparing for said dance. And Rory goes to the dance. Lorelai stays home with Emily, who is taking care of her. Uh, and as we can all imagine, drama ensues. So this is a heavy episode. There's a lot. It's a big, big emotions in this episode. What did you think? Big time, yeah. I um, well, I loved this episode. I love any episode where people are getting dressed up to like go somewhere, go to a dance, and especially um, like late '90s, early 2000s feel. The music that they played, the fashion. I'm gonna get into the fashion a little bit later. There was so much that I just really enjoyed, visually and audibly, and then emotionally about this mm -hmm. episode. I feel like my opinions and my sort of perception of almost all of the characters, if not changed but shifted a little bit um, for pretty much oh. everybody we saw. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm curious. I can't wait to dig into it. Okay. <laughs> so starts Friday night dinner. Who's not there? Richard. Richard's traveling. Richard's in, in Prague. Prague. They are discussing how there's a, a Chilton formal because Emily read the newsletter <laughs> and Lorelai did not. <laughs> They're talking about, will she, won't she? And Rory's saying, you know, she's not going to go to the dance. And Emily automatically is like, Lorelai, what did you say to her? Lorelai's like, excuse me. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> say anything. This is all Rory. You leave me out of it. <laughs> Meanwhile, she's like picking the avocado out of her salad. <laughs> Emily's like, since when do you like not like avocado? And she's like, since I asked, hey, what is this slimy stuff? And I said, ew, I don't like that. Like, or whatever. <laughs> I just love the way she talks to her. I love the way she talks to her mother. <laughs> Makes me so happy. So Rory is saying that she doesn't want to go to the dance. Lorelai is defending her. They're like, well, it's her choice, mom. And and Emily's just like, yeah, if she doesn't want to go, it must be because it's something that you you said. Come on, man. Like, I, I see where she's coming from because Lorelai's fought tooth and nail to do the opposite of like everything Chilton mm -hmm. would do. But <laughs> this one time, Lorelai's like, hey, it's not on me. I, I did not do that. <laughs> I found that um, I think Emily and Lorelai feel like parents, like both of them, like they are being, they are both being Rory's parent. It feels like they're, they're both being the two sort of types of parents, the ones that are like very involved, like, well, I read the newsletter and I'm going to prepare this for my, for my child. And you know, yes, of course she's going to go off to the dance. And then Lorelai is just like, well, no, you know, let her, let her just be as, as, as she wants. 
wants to be. But like Emily is invested in the school and the mm-hmm. future. And Lorelai seems more invested in Rory. But they they do kind of feel like they're co-parenting here in a way. And um Yeah. And I feel like they really play up Lorelai's childishness in that you can tell she's just like not in the mood to talk about the upcoming future plans and things. She's in like in times like these where she's just sort of picking out her avocado, she's I wrote that she's clinging to her childlike comforts. She's sort of she's being a parent and a child at the same time, I think, mm-hmm. in this scene. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think the whole episode she like because we don't get any glimpse of the like work Lorelai or you know, like the whole episode right. she's been like she's kind of infantilized a little bit. Yeah. And yeah. And they they start it from the very, very beginning, the first scene mm-hmm. with that avocado. And so they leave dinner and then that's when Lorelai takes the chance to actually have the conversation with Rory about like, okay, but why don't you want to go to the dance? Like, yeah. I, I appreciate that she didn't want to have that conversation in front of her mom who would be like, well, see, see, like, yeah, she has to go. Like, if there's no reason, blah, blah, blah. It's like, I, I really appreciated that she took the time to have a private conversation with her about that. Um, and mm-hmm. I feel like in this scene, she gave like just the right amount of encouragement and support and like kind of tried to get to the root of it without being Emily it was just like, well, you're going to go. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. she asks her like, well, why don't you want to go to the dance? Is it because you're afraid? Like, are you afraid that it's going to be a bad time or that you're not going to like, you know, she just starts like listing all these things. Like you're going to be embarrassed because you, you're dancing in a room full of people. And then you realize you shouldn't <laughs> be dancing in a room full of people. Rory kind of concedes, uh, which I think is, is great that Rory wasn't, she just didn't like, you know, get defensive. She was able mm. to kind of like, well, it's probably it. Like, I question, well, this this bit got me questioning and later on in the episode too, what is actually behind Rory's preconceptions of stuff? Similar to Dean, we'll see Dean a little bit later, and mm-hmm. they both sort of have the same attitude initially about this dance, being like, oh, you know, it's only for like those kinds of people and we don't do that because we're the more like intellectuals, you know, that's not what we do. We're like, why not? And I think... In this scene, Lorelai, in this scene in particular, she's um, she might be wondering how much of her has rubbed off on Rory. Mm-hmm. And like, how yeah, how much of her own personality and behavior is influencing her daughter's choices and preconceptions and things. And so she must be aware of that, that like, okay, well, if I want to support my daughter in doing whatever the heck she wants to do, then I need to sort of help her foster this kind of you know, more of this individuality and help her feel confident in going forward and being herself and making her own decisions rather than being influenced by other people. Rory kind of gets into it because she says, like, I don't like my classmates. My classmates don't like me. And I'm going to be standing alone at the back of the room listening to 98 Degrees while Tristan and Paris fight (laughs) over, like, who hates me more or something like that. Yeah, 98 Degrees. (laughs) Remember? Yes. Oh, yeah. I, the the way that this show can make so many, like, different points in time references, you know, classic references, traditional ones, just from, like, any point in time, and then it'll zero in on one that firmly plans it in 2000. <laughs> you know? Like, oh, yeah. 98 degrees. <laughs> right. And then, yes. and, and Lorelai eventually mentions, in her case, it was listening to Tom Waits, which yes. oh, struck a chord with me because I adore Tom Waits. He's yeah, Fantastic so this is coming weird. right up. Or it'll be all sparkly and exciting, and you'll be standing on the dance floor listening to Tom Waits with some great-looking guy staring at you so hard that you don't even realize that Paris and Tristan have just been eaten by bears. What guy? I don't know, maybe the guy who hangs out in our trees all day waiting for you to come home? Dean does not hang out in trees. <laughs> okay, so I like Tom Waits, but mm-hmm. I couldn't name any song of his other than the What's He Building in There song. Which is okay. not a dance style song. No. <laughs> so no. what song would they be listening to as per you? Uh, well, if it was me, oh, actually that point in time, I don't know him chronologically, but my preference of a Tom Waits song is um, Cold Water, which is much more recent than that. It's just like a heavy, bluesy, scratchy, bluesy, clunk kind of song. Um, but he also, he also has a beautiful song that I think a lot of people 
that people might know called I Hope I Don't Fall In Love With You. And that's a very like warm blues again, but like acoustic blues. So it suits them very much. Okay. Awesome. Yes. I will just say it a million times. I love everything that Lorelai says. So it's not just like, <laughs> you'll have a great time. That's the opposite. It's like, well, you won't notice that Tristan and Paris have been eaten by bears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And at first, she's talking. And she says, uh, maybe the guy who hangs out in the trees all day. I was like, what is she talking about? I, I didn't know. realize right off that she was talking about Dean. And I was like, who is this man? Why is Dean in the trees? <laughs> and she's like, uh, he hit his head on a branch when I came out of the house too fast last <laughs> This, all of this off-screen story we're getting. Yeah, right? It's like they have... We we miss so much of their daily lives. By the end of this scene that Lorelai is offering to make a dress. Mm. You can mm. tell... Okay, one, she's making a dress. Seamstress. You can see my dress form over here is currently naked because I am just about to start another project. But, um... And also, she is ready to invest herself in this episode episode of Rory's life and this yep. like hey I, I I don't want you to be afraid I want you to feel brave to do this I want you to feel like you can ask him you can go to this dance have a good time just try it out and I love that she's like she's going so far as to like let's actually make a whole thing about it I will make you the dress we'll get some cute shoes we'll do your hair and your makeup and like let's turn this into a thing that we can both enjoy and I, I think her her excitement and her enthusiasm is infectious <laughs> and yeah. Rory gets infected and it's great. <laughs> She's like, oh, this could be fun and this could be cute. Cause like what 17 year old girl doesn't want to get her hair done, doesn't want to get new shoes and right. Yeah. I feel like may I maybe maybe this is the me talking, but maybe this is like a, a me and Rory thing where like you immediately assume that it's just gonna be it's all up to you. You're on your own. And if it's if it was j just me having to put together this dress, this whole outfit, this look and you know all of that i'd have no confidence in myself and i'd stop before i even began you know so yeah. just have your not just your cheerleader but your supporter go in with you oh, it's great. yeah i don't think rory would have been quite so hesitant had it been stars hollow high because she'd have lain mm. there like dean would be there it would already be like a more familiar situation i think it's because it was generally like the chilton's kids and just the the whole social scene that she's not used to and doesn't want to be part of at all right and yeah she just doesn't feel included nor really want to be included because of like the type of kids that they are so i understand mm -hmm. the hesitation i don't get it to the point of like i don't i don't get the like needing to go to the dance as much from emily's perspective because she's like it's a once in a lifetime opportunity like you know that right. there are gonna be more dances there are going <laughs> to be dances. like it just doesn't make any sense it's not a once in a lifetime mm -hmm. opportunity but Okay, Emily, whatever. I mean, maybe your first tilt and dance is the once in a lifetime event, but then the next one would be the first. So, <laughs> just before right. the end of this scene, Rory says, kind of out of the blue, it seems, she goes, You won't think I'm an idiot for, for what? For going to the dance? Like, what? I, it's, it's a weird. Does she actually think her mom would think she's an idiot for something? I think so. Or for trying? Yeah. And I so, like, so. what does this tell us about how Rory feels even around her mom, of her mom's opinion? Like, I think it's just it's because odd. it's the rich kid stuff. If it was mm. anything else, like if it was the Stars Hollow dance, I don't think she would feel that way that, that Lorelai would think right. she's an idiot. I think it's just because Rory is starting to do all of the things that she's heard her mom having like ostracized and, and right. run away from. And so I think it's the context of her hearing her whole life that everything that happened to her as a child was terrible and awful and like not at all her style right. and for Rory to be kind of interested in trying some of it she's like yeah but my mom hates this stuff and I love yeah. her so much and I think she's so cool and am I not cool because I want to go to this dance with chicken mm -hmm. like so I think it's, it's yeah fair enough. That. so then yeah they're talking about Rory needing to bring a date and I mean to us the viewers we've seen her and Dean it seems obvious but she's talking to Lane and she's so nervous about asking Dean and it's so cute. And and Lane is this like wise, like dating <laughs> expert with all this <laughs> advice. <laughs> with zero <laughs> experience, but all of the advice. <laughs> yeah. And she comes up with the with the phrase, those who can 
do those who can't teach when it comes mm-hmm. to like, the dating scene. And in this scene, I can sort of see the age difference between the two actresses. I, I more yes. clearly see the age difference between the two actresses because Lane is looking at Rory with this like excited reverence, but not as like a friend who's like envious and like, you know, like this is like giddy and whatever. She's looking at her like, oh, <laughs> like my, my, my little grasshopper. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so you can tell that the actresses from the actress's standpoint, it just is completely different because yeah. uh, it's almost like, yeah, Kiko Ajena is like proud of Rory for like having a date <laughs> to go to. She's like a Lorelai's level here. And so Rory is questioning like whether Dean would want to go with her. I'm like, he's so into you. He hides in your trees. He's going, <laughs> like, why would you be afraid? Well, I think because she's just afraid to ask him of all people because of the sort of personality type that we get from him and the kind of thing for all the same reasons that she was unsure because of her preconceptions that like those are for snobby people those kinds of dances are for snobby people and like what am I gonna have to wear like a a suit and tie and like have a corsage and things like so formal and traditional which is what Dean is very much trying not to be with his floppy hair and his leather jacket and his you know Nick Drake and all of that so and they're yeah they're edgy books his Hunter Hunter Thompson was that what he was talking about last week I think yeah yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah, so I think she's it's not so she's not afraid that he's gonna say no to her he's gonna say no to the dance that like why why would you even want to go and because when she actually does ask him she's yeah she's like she has to sort of give herself and explain a reason why she should go you know why it might be a good idea that like oh not because oh i i want to go to this and i want to take you along with me but she's like trying to convince him that no it won't be you know snobby of us it won't be pretentious like but she has to make up a reason and i i i something about dean in this episode i'll start this conversation now Mm. because something about dean in this episode that bothers me quite a bit is I'm discovering how like watery he can be as in there are some things that he is absolutely certain about and he states as as fact as like very he's very very conclusive but any time pretty much any time that Rory asks him something or they're having a discussion he leaves everything up to Rory he gives very like wishy-washy answers or like well, I guess if you want to, uh, if you think so. He seems to be bothered, but he doesn't vocalize that he's bothered. He does not state anything. He does not help anything. And she's clearly yeah. so indecisive all the way through. And she she needs somebody's help to indicate one way or another, especially if it's between the two of them and, and their relationship, which is hugely important that both parties are participating in the relationship. But he he gives nothing. <laughs> He's, he he performs, we'll see later when he sort of performs the protective boyfriend, but he's so, I don't know, he's just so wishy-washy. And it really, really drove me nuts. I still think he's wonderful. I do. But, and maybe this is the, the grown-up in me seeing, you know, oh, well, if he was my boyfriend, I'd be ticked off with him already and be like, oh, God, no. <laughs> no, leaving that behind. But, um, yeah, she has to do a lot of the work in, in this episode, and it's irritating. But she does manage to convince him to go. He says yes, eventually. He does say yes, eventually. I, I get what you're saying about Dean. I think part of it is vulnerability or, like, not wanting to be vulnerable. So, like, not wanting to necessarily mm-hmm. put himself out there and up- upset her or be upset at whatever's going on. And that's a little bit more, like, later in the episode. At the grocery store, at Dosi's, when she's asking him... I think he's being wishy-washy because she's being wishy-washy. Had she just straight out like said, hey, I want to go to the dance and I want to go with you. Like, do you want to come with me? I think if she had been more forthcoming, I think he would have been a lot more decisive. But I think because he doesn't like really want to go, 
I think he was waiting for her to maybe change her mind or like he's he's going along with it because he wants to be a good boyfriend and and do the thing because she wants to do the thing and he wants to make her happy. But yeah, it's annoying, especially when they're in the car on the way there. She's like, yes, do we go? Do we stay? Do we go? Like, that's where it would have been. The good boyfriend would have been like, we're going to the dance. We're all dressed up. We look great. He does tell her that she looks beautiful. Uh, yes. Which I thought was nice. That's the only thing he's concrete about. <laughs> yes. he's like, all I know is you look amazing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and and so it would have been so good for him to be encouraging and, and supportive because he, they're already mm. going. They're in the car. And she's like, yeah. maybe we should just. And he's like, okay. She's like, what? Like, when you say something like that, it's because you're looking for feedback to give you the strength and courage to do what you're about yeah. to do. You know, if you're feeling anxious. Yeah. You need that that support for sure. Yeah, definitely. And it's it is, yeah, later on in the episode where it stood out to me that he's like this, but he was sort of already being like this at the beginning of the episode. And you're like, come on, just give her an answer. <laughs> I as much as I don't love the like wishy washiness in the car, I actually do kind of like that he tells her that he's like not super interested and that he does vocalize his discomfort about that. Yeah. Because some yep. partners, especially teenagers, I feel, some people would just be like, oh, this is what you want to do? Okay. And just like go along with it without actually mm. telling them what you think. And so I kind of, as much as I was like fully rooting, you know, for Rory, I'm like, no, you should be excited, Dean. You should just want to go everywhere with her and do everything with her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'm mm -hmm. glad that he still like lets himself be heard in, in that situation. Yeah. Like, I'm going yeah. for you, but I don't really love the idea but i'm i'll i'll do it i'll do it for you so i like mm -hmm. that because it's still it still feels like he's not just being a doormat for rory and he's not just like fully the like secondary character who's just along True. for the ride and and even though even though it it it's clear in his in his immediate reaction that it's not something he's super interested in going to and his probably his immediate response would be no he he he's not rude about it. I think a a weaker character would just be like, "What do you want to go there for? Isn't it stupid? Like you, all you do is complain about your classmates. Why would you want to go there? No, don't go." And like and make a big whole judgment on on Rory, which he doesn't do. So mm. good, good point. <laughs> I like that. So Dean says yes. They're going to the dance. Mm -hmm. Lorelai is making Rory's dress. The color of that dress is stunning. Like Isn't this. It darkish not navy this like kind of medium to dark dusty blue shade i like i don't know what that color is called maybe do you would you have a color for that i i think i would call it a like muted marine blue maybe okay uh okay. yeah coastal, sort of muted darker coastal blue yeah sure yeah <laughs> something like that it's such a beautiful but deep blue um satin dress and someone has definitely like put in the effort to make that look like something that is handmade and that Lorelai right? is in the process yeah. of making it's beautiful really really good really good yeah and she has a <laughs> she is near enough attacked by her dress form which I can say yep. has never happened to me before the dress form has fallen yeah. over but it's never fallen on me thank heavens because Not I yet. am now her her age and i sure as hell hope i don't have that kind of a uh an injury caused by a dress form falling on top of me right because the poor old thing tweaks her back doesn't she it does poor lorelei and it seems to get worse as the episode goes on because like she's yeah. able to like get up and walk away mm -hmm. and you know she's just kind of like oh that's uncomfortable Okay. Suki arrives with some thread. I just love that Suki comes to the house just like bearing things. Every time Suki's come <laughs> to the house, she's had cupcakes. She's had food for the wake. She always just shows up. And so this time she comes in the door, she's got a box and you're like, what is it? And it's thread. And you're like, oh. I wrote in my notes, Suki comes in a whimsy goth wonder. Oh. She has the most incredible jacket in this scene. Or cardigan, okay. long cardigan, okay. jacket, yeah, like, something. It is absolutely gorgeous. Suki in this episode in particular has some really beautiful, I think anyway, beautiful but like unconventionally beautiful fashion and, and, and garments. She's wearing a leather skirt later on in the episode 
And in this scene, she's got this beautiful, it's like, a, I suppose it's a, a purple burgundy. It's got, I think it's got like a fur something. It's either fur or it's, or it's a plush printed long cardigan jacket type thing. Very much. Yeah. Whimsy goth, your Y2K, Incredible. um, whimsical jewel tones and things. And I, I especially love seeing that kind of fashion and that kind of character styling on a plus size actress. Mm. Um, and like they do it with, with her hair as well. Her hair is always interesting when we don't see her in her chef outfit and her, you know, mm -hmm. her work attire, she's got such a quirky and I think beautiful, really, really beautiful feminine style. And that really stands out, I think, in this in this episode. She shows up and she's got the thread. She knows Lorelai has hurt her back and has like a bag of drugs. <laughs> she just like opens her purse and she's like, I got Vicodin, I got Percocets, I got this, I got that, I got this back or this like muscle relaxant very mild like so which means she's got some stuff that ain't mild in there she's got like she's like this is the one that you want don't worry it's not like the suki grade <laughs> stuff it's like girl <laughs> what well I, she's this, she's a clumsy individual that's so, it and so at this point i yeah. have forgotten how clumsy she was yeah <laughs> because you know she just showed up and she's got all and i was like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> What are we supposed to extrapolate from this? Uh... Right. This is obviously before the opioid crisis because I don't think that this would be as like okay at this point in time because it's all prescription too, right? And so she's just like giving out prescriptions. We're like, girl, okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, Lorelai uh, is just stuck on the phone with her mother Emily, who again is being like the distant co-parent. She really really wants to be involved with this very special once in a lifetime opportunity chance evening of rory's and she wants to know like what does the dress look like and who is she going with please take photos i want a photo of when she's coming down the stairs and i want a photo of like of of, of all of this and when she's on her way and emily makes the, this the this great joke she'll make a flip book out of it and pretend i was there I, like what a great idea and then Lorelai makes one of her rare opening concessions or something invitations and says, Mom, why don't you come over? Yeah. Why don't you come over and be here for it? Like, what? And you can see on Emily's face just how hugely important that is. Yeah. That, like, yes. Like, I, I, I was ready. To, I was preparing myself to sort of, you know, make do with being over here, but you're inviting me. Yes, I will be there. Okay. Emily calls with the intention of, like, convincing Lorelai to make Rory go to the dance. And so That's right. Oh yeah. Emily yeah. is going on and on and on and Lorelai is just letting her. She's like, mm hmm Yeah. Okay. Mm hmm mm hmm mm hmm For so long. <laughs> Mom, Rory is going to the dance. She is? Uh-huh. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm thrilled. I'm uh I'm making her dress right now. You're making her dress? Yep. But why? <laughs> Well, so she'll look really ugly and people will point and throw rocks. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, the level of the amount of joy on Emily's face. She's just like, oh, what? Like, this is so important to her. And mm -hmm. like, maybe we don't really get it, but this is so important to Emily. And she's just over the moon. And then in a split second, she's like, what? <laughs> she's just like, you just ruined this for me. <laughs> Well, I, I think she's so over the moon because I get the impression from, from the previous episode that these kinds of like formal dance events didn't actually happen all that much for Lorelai because we saw her in her, saw the photo of her in the, in the dress, her coming out. Debutante ball out. coming out. Debutante pretty. ball. That's what it is. Yeah. That she didn't go to. So were mm. there other occasions where she said, absolutely no and so for for emily I'm, I'm 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 just going off of that i'm assuming that for emily this is not the same but it's it's the closest they've been since lorelei was that age so yeah hugely exciting it's it might as well be prom it might as well be rory's wedding like ah because yeah lorelei didn't even get married did she nope no. there's not been a wedding so so emily must be gagging for something like this <laughs> yeah 
And so she <laughs> fully, I think she was fishing for the invitation from Lorelai. I don't think she was expecting her to take the bait, but she was fully like, she's like, I'll take, like, I'll, you take all these pictures and to make a flip book so I could pretend that I was there. Like, she <laughs> wants to be there so badly. Like, if it was up to she Emily, does, yeah. Rory would be leaving from her house. <laughs> yes. But, oh, absolutely. Yeah. But she's like, no, I'll just have to make do, you know. And so, you know, that like, Lorelai slowly sinking to the floor like her back hurts and her mom is like fishing for this invitation and she's like mom do you want to come and she's like oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> do you th do you think she was actually expecting her to invite her oh fully I feel like it, yeah oh yeah. I don't know I know sorry I, read it as I more don't of a think surprise. she expected her to say yes I think she was putting the feelers out there but was pleasantly surprised when Lorelai actually did it and mm, invited okay her. interesting to me, it came um, across as much more of a like totally unexpected surprise of like, like like a, a wish, a hope, yeah. But like, what really? You would let me be at your home? So interesting. So the following day, they are in line for tickets, and it's the worst because Tristan is so ugh. like so he goes up and he buys two tickets from Paris, who is the person selling the tickets with other rando boy, and he even like so he asks her. And she's like, cut her hair. It's like, is your hair shorter? She's like, yeah, a quarter inch. But like, you know that he genuinely did not notice that. And he's still like laying on the compliments, but not enough to make her to like lead her on, but just enough to like feed her. He is being manipulative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. It's crumbs. Mm -hmm. Just to like. Deliberately dropping crumbs. Yeah. Because he knows that she's infatuated with him. So, and you know, he asks her like, oh, well, you, do you need a date for the dance? Oh, no, you wouldn't. Like, he doesn't even give her the chance to say yes. He's like, you wouldn't be available this close. Like, he's so smirmy and slimy and slick and gross. It's such a weird, it's a weird, like, disguised cruelty. Because, like, because yeah. it's kind of a compliment saying like, nah, you wouldn't. Oh, obviously, you have someone this close to the dance. Obviously, someone's already going along. It's, you know, it seems complimentary but it's just conniving enough that yeah. yeah she she takes the bait she takes the crumbs and she's just you know drawn just dragged along with it and i yeah this is this is another part where one of the characters well some of the characters i started to see in a slightly different way because seeing just how wimpy paris gets around tristan one it gives her character depth absolutely beautiful brilliant but like to see just how far that extends in like how crushed she can be and how 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 painful unrequited love can be even in someone who she's not like the school bully she's just a really mean girl and does like directly bullies rory i've never seen her be horrible to anyone else have you is she no. horrible no. no i don't think so well she's very one note <laughs> With okay. everybody, I feel. Like, she's still very, like, she snaps at people, and she's domineering, and she has these, like, ridiculous expectations, and, and all of right. that is just because she wants to feel control in every situation because she feels so, like, her self-esteem is, like, zero. Mm -hmm. So when it comes yeah. to her crush, that's when it, like, fully comes out yeah. because she can't just like wield this forceful personality on him and have him bend to her wishes or whatever mm -hmm. oh it's so sad <laughs> it really makes it me is. feel sad and, for and her. yeah and tristan totally takes advantage of that because he knows how she is everybody knows how paris is he knows she does not have a date for the dance he knows because of who she is and how she is so he's being gross he buys two tickets and then sees rory in line and then starts like getting after her about like oh shouldn't the guy buy the tickets oh so you're with the cheap guy you want to go to the dance with me and she's like ew what the f what <laughs> absolutely not like that is like the her refusal thing. oh her refusal it is so beautifully worded the the women and the names that she drops in here are just oh, I have so very that. rory I love it um this is another case where watching this show i so wish that i had like a script writer for myself <laughs> because right? if someone could have scripted me refusing or turning down some guy whether it worked or not doesn't matter but if someone could script me a refusal like that please that'd be great <laughs> i would love right? it it's like i hear squeaky from is up her parole soon like brilliant <laughs> brilliant this yeah. episode i found a really hard time i had a really hard time keeping up with some of the references 
because there's mm-hmm. just so many names like Oscar de Levant. I didn't know who that was. Like there were so many different things being thrown out that I had no idea what the heck they were talking about. And so that felt very, I was 11 in 2000 and don't know what was going on. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but I knew Squeaky from. Who's that? <laughs> um, one of the Manson girls. Ah, uh, yes. Was she, was she part of the group that did the mm-hmm. murder? I see. I don't mm-hmm. want to say the word murder online. It's very weird. Um, Susan Faludi, though. Do you yeah, know who that? Susan Faludi is? No. She was a, she is, she is a um, feminist, very much feminist author um, and reporter. So very much somebody who would have been uh, Rory's idol hero. Uh, very much somebody that that uh, Rory would admire and want to be. I think. Amazing. Obviously, <laughs> Rory turns Tristan down. She's done being kind and cautious around him like she's done tr- stop like not trying to make him uncomfortable she's just like ew no stop it go away she gets to the front of the line and paris like loses it on her being like how could you be so rude to him and she's like are you not paying attention like he's terrible he is the worst mm-hmm. and i don't understand why paris is so obsessed with rory being nice to tristan Mm-mm. Mm-mm. because that would make it, she would have more competition. I thought they decided, like, I thought it was clear that Rory didn't want Tristan, and so who cares? Yeah, it gives the impression that Paris isn't just, it isn't just a big old crush she has on him, but she has fully put him on this, like, godlike pedestal, that he is untouchable. He must be, you know, bowed down to by everyone, because he is the ultimate of like yeah. brilliant men stunning and it it just it that's what crushes me even more is that she isn't just insecure but she has just absolutely elevated him to beyond beyond just a crush and it's so sad and she even says like he was so nice to you and you couldn't have been a bigger jerk he wasn't being nice <laughs> is that what you think being nice is paris like obviously paris does not know how to be nice because she's not anyway no. <laughs> but if no. that's what her standards are and like maybe because rich kids have like a certain or like rich people are are like stereotypically like certain ways like maybe there's like mm-hmm. a, the arrogance there that they're just used to seeing maybe her parents like her dad is arrogant like that and like maybe mm-hmm. that's just like what she sees because that's their environment and i don't know and like it's probable that she's known him like for her whole life and doesn't even see him for the like horrible young man he is rather like i guess he was probably a horrible child as well so i'm not sure (laughs) oh my god i I, if uh, i i think i would probably crumble at like 12 year old tristan Twelve. Oh my god. When I was twelve, or like an, yeah. when I was twelve and thirteen, that was the boys were my bullies. There's one in particular who has unfortunately become fairly successful, and I'm like, God dang, I need revenge on him. He needs to not have success in life because he was such a horrible <laughs> person to me. But anyway, oh, anyway <laughs> personal investment. Right <laughs> so Rory is ready for the dance. She looks so beautiful and so wonderful. And she comes in wearing her dress and these like big clunky boots, (laughs) which I love. And Lorelai's like, love, love the shoes. And she's like, well, the heels hurt, okay? (laughs) (laughs) And then Suki comes over with food this time. Never shows up empty handed. She shows up with tacos and burritos for Lorelai's. And Suki like sprays herself in the eye (laughs) with the hairspray. And that would hurt so badly. That'd be horrific. This this is actually where I was reminded just how much um, Melissa McCarthy did become um, such a like a such a, a powerful figure in comedy. Like, obviously, she's been hilarious in this show so far, but this like physical comedy, um, not going too over the top. Like it doesn't become stupid, and she's falling everywhere, and then the bookshelf falls down, and but you know, it's not over the top like yeah. that. She just plays it so well that, yeah, I was reminded, like, yeah, she is a master comedian, I think. Just absolutely yeah. fantastic. And I love this line that she has regarding Rory. So she's not asking about the photos. She's not like, take pictures for me. Instead, she's like adding to Rory's experience, saying, at some point tonight, walk down a flight of stairs. Oh, it's like movie it's, stars. Like, you look like a movie star. Movie, movie stars, stars always it. walk down the stairs. And you're like, that's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Lorelai yeah. is like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, she says yeah, something exactly. like that. Yeah, exactly. Like, we don't get it. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> 
I get it. And so I, get it. I like that with the hairspray. So Laura like gets the hairspray. She's like doing her hair. And then she goes through like all the different scenarios where like the hairspray will work. <laughs> She's like, okay, you can do one slow dance, like three fast song. But if you want to mosh, we're going to need another coat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so then Emily shows up while Rory's in the kitchen. And she's like all excited to like, she's got her camera. She's like, okay, Rory, come out here. Rory comes out with like a big napkin and she's like eating a taco. <laughs> like, wow, hey, grandma. And, she's, and this is where Laura like, actually jumps in and it's like, grandma is here for like the pretty picture. So go back, lose the taco in the bib, put the shoes on, <laughs> come back out for the pretty picture for grandma. Yeah. And she actually like indulges her here, which I thought was really cute. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. And so, you know, Emily is so excited and she's like taking all these pictures like pretty well by the way like the angle like getting down and crouching instead of just <laughs> like awkward you know like i don't know i thought that was i, I would be interested to see how her photos turned out because i was impressed yeah, she was the, very close up <laughs> yeah right just like <laughs> now i've got up okay. your nose <laughs> And then she says, I'm so glad you decided to buy her a dress. And Lorelai just lets it slide. She doesn't say anything. I would have been mm -hmm. like, I want the credit. I'm here. Mm -hmm. blah, like right in that moment. But I think Lorelai is just like, oh, whatever. She's I'm avoiding the argument. It. She's like, I don't want, I want this yeah. little moment to go really smooth. We don't need to have any kind of a nothing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Suki kind of spills the beans that Lorelai has been injured. So... Mm. Suki's trying to leave. She's like still blinded from the hairspray. She's talking to the coroner, like, hey, Mrs. Gilmore, nice to see you again. And <laughs> <laughs> talking to so Laura. Good. And then she says to Lorelai, like, let me know if you need anything, like help, I think, going up the stairs or something like that. And then Emily's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Laura, like, nothing, nothing. Uh, mm -hmm. But then right at that moment, Dean shows up. He's outside honking. And I've got a little clip of this. Where are you going? To the dance. You do not go running out the door when a boy honks. Mom, it's fine. It certainly is not fine. This is not a drive through She is not fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed so hard at that part because you, I know Emily has never been in a drive through to get fried chicken. <laughs> Ever. Ever. And I, like, laughed <laughs> thinking about her in her, like, pantsuits. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Going to get some KFC. <laughs> And so she forces, again, it's like a co-parenting thing. Lorelai is just like letting it happen. Mm -hmm. I was watching this with my husband and he was like, who is she to say anything? Go, mm -hmm. go. Because mm -hmm. that's like, Lorelai is just like, sorry, she's so meek and mild here. And she's not let like defending the situation because Emily is like, no, you cannot just like run out for a boy to honk. He needs to come to the door. He needs to come in and say like, good evening. How do you do? Nice to meet you. All of this stuff that was not in the cards. <laughs> and Rory's like, but he doesn't know he needs to come inside. Like mm -hmm. it's before texting. She can't just be like, yo. You know, come inside. Grandma wants to meet you. Like, yeah. <laughs> and so it was so uncomfortable. They're there for an eternity. Mm -hmm. He's honking and honking well, and honking. I, I think another, like, another part of the point of this is as if it hasn't already been introduced, but to really bring forward this um, uh, contrast, I suppose, not just contrast, but theme or image of Dean being the like less dignified country, not country boy, but like just less dignified, very like hokey, earthy, uncivilized kind of side boy who doesn't have the manners or the breeding or the whatever, which we will get into a little bit later, well, shortly at the dance, that I don't think has actually been brought up much in the show yet, but then it does. And uh, it, it hit me um, a little bit later on how great the divide is between the mm -hmm. Chilton elite folks with all the, you know, the breeding and the whatevers that we've already seen in, in Emily, obviously. And then, yeah, and then the, the people that I feel more comfortable with, the more like homespun, small town, cozy community type people, you know, more yeah. casual. Yeah, they're a little bit more like blue collar, I would say. Like Dean is that, there that more that yeah. vibe. Mm -hmm. Whereas they're more not even white collar, they're black tie. They're like yes. they're <laughs> a whole other, whole other level. I think there's like phrase salt of the earth type people. <laughs> yeah, so it's so awkward. And then Dean comes in and once again, I feel like Emily has a bit of a I knew it 
kind of vibe because mm. he comes in and doesn't say like, oh, hi, nice to meet you. How are you tonight, Mrs. Gilmore? It's none of that. It's just like, hi, are we going? Like, it's just, it's it's mm -hmm. really, and she was just like, excuse me. And so the second they leave, she like kind of rounds on, on Lorelai. She's like, what do you know about him? Does he drink? Like, she's just like rolling her. And she's like, mom, if I knew anything bad about him, he wouldn't be going to the dance with Rory. Exactly. Like, I, it's okay. Like, I've, we've been through this. Like, your concerns are not warranted. He's a good kid. We and of course, she does it bit. in that, that wonderful Lorelai way that like, when something should be obvious, she goes fully sarcastic. You know, yes. the, like, does he drink? Yeah, like a fish. And like, oh, yeah, well, his parole officer recently let him out, blah, blah, blah. Or, you know. <laughs> yeah. So then she kind of switches gears and is like, well, I can't, I can't go home. Like, you're, you're injured. And Laura like, excuse me, what? <laughs> you need, no. And she's like, no, no, no. Like, you, you are hurt. Like, what if you need something? You certainly can't be left alone. Yes, I can. You can barely move. You've been sitting on that couch since I got here. That's because this is a right comfy couch. Maybe I should stay. No, no, Mom. You don't. You really don't have to do that. I'm not leaving my daughter stranded on a couch. What if you need to get to the bathroom? I don't go anymore, Mom. I gave it up cold turkey. <laughs> <laughs> I love that because, like, you know that's not going to be, like, an actual convincing response. Like, mm -hmm. she just, I feel like she knows that she's fighting a losing battle. And mm -hmm. because she is really hurt. And she's just like, that. Anyone but you, mom. <laughs> mm -hmm. Emily just wants to be nurturing and take care of her daughter. And that she is does. Lorelai's nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> it's the exact mm -hmm. opposite of what she wants. Especially in her own house. Because I feel yeah. like there are way too many things that could go wrong when she's in like her own space. Where it's like, if it's at Emily's house, there it's on her terms. It's not as private and personal and it's not as much of an invasion. But here it's like, oh no, you're at my house and it was supposed to be like a 10 minute thing. What do you mean? Like I was okay with 10 minutes. <laughs> we did talk about a little bit earlier in the episode, Dean and Rory on the way to the dance. Rory is so nervous and so anxious. And she keeps being like, oh, should we go? Should we not go? And Dana's mm. just not helping at all. He and really I, isn't. She, the thing so is, annoyed. like, she was obviously enjoying the preparation and the getting ready to go. Like, she absolutely was stoked. When she was in the environment of, like, Suki's there, her mom's there, she's got the dress on, she's, you know, she's looking beautiful, the hairspray. She's so thrilled. But as soon as it's just her and Dean, her, all of her doubts come back. She's yeah, like, yeah, she, 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 it's almost, is, is she maybe embarrassed or afraid of seeming enthusiastic and excited? I don't know, but maybe. And I think it feels more real, like, cause they're on yeah, their way there true. and all of a sudden it's like, whoa, no. Oh my God. I think Rory is still trying to keep her excitement going. I think despite her being like really, really indecisive, she's, it's like, she's trying to get back to being excited about going. And she talks about. The, that the venue is this like old and historic place, which for her is really exciting. Um, at the start of the episode, top of the episode, we were talking about Prague and she seems so excited to go to Prague because it's historic and old and, you know, just rich in culture. And so that's clearly something that gets her excited. I like and that she's... connection. I hadn't made, I hadn't pieced that together that she's talking about the old mm. buildings in Prague and now the old building. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Good one. Well, that's what I do. Um, yeah, so 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 I think she's she's trying to build up her excitement again. It's not quite working on Dean because Dean's just there to take her to the dance. But what he does know and what he is there and happy to say is, "You look amazing tonight," hmm. which is very well timed, I think. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's definitely a really sweet thing for him for him to say. I think she's just looking for any type of excitement from him or enthusiasm mm -hmm. about the actual dance. But I think she's just looking for reassurance. I think she's nervous to get there and see all those kids. And we didn't actually touch on it, but it is like a, a formal it's dinner. Like our school dances mm -hmm. other than prom. That was the only one prom was the only one that had a meal. Our school dances yeah. were like you show up at seven or eight whatever time it is like 7 to 11 you're at the dance mm -hmm. you're dancing there's music and that's it you call but this is dinner and dancing so it's a whole other level yeah i think she's just so nervous <laughs> mm -hmm. we hear emily on the phone 
with her maid basically telling her that like to lock up and whatever i've got a clip here uh, i just i feel like lorelei all the time <laughs> <laughs> all right and i just resemble her so much no i won't be home tonight oh. was that a pain yes a big one <laughs> I would do that, and I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Emily has a line in this scene that I love so much, and it just, like, I laughed out loud so many times in this episode, despite how, like, really heavy it can be at times. I laughed so hard, um, and I know that this line is quoted, because I had, I typed it into Google to see that I got, like, the line itself accurate. And like, there are pages and pages of people like laughing and using this quote. She's looking for, what are they, candlesticks? Yeah, the yes, Baccarat candlesticks. candlesticks. That's it, yes. And finds out that they, they aren't there because they've been exchanged for a lamp, a monkey lamp. And my God, yeah. Kelly Bishop, she deserves an award for this line alone. Um, I think I have a clip of it. Please, I don't want to ruin it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It has to be the one. Traded my lovely gift for a semi-pornographic leering monkey lamp? How could you? This is not just about the bad breeding of returning a gift. This goes to the very heart of the question of taste. You were given something of substance, and you cast it off for a ridiculous, slightly sinister barroom decoration? Explain this to me, Lorelei. My back hurts. Out. <laughs> that I one. had to keep the yes. out. Yes. That, <laughs> that whole that thing. That line. How did she... How did she get those lines out? I how how did she do that without falling to pieces? That yep. must have been so many takes because it's wow. It's not just about the bad breeding about returning a gift. It comes down to the very question of taste. <laughs> and she means it. This is like an affront to everything she represents. <laughs> so insane. I mean the lamp is terrible. Yeah, but that's it's not, not great. Up to me. Or or yeah. Emily or anybody. If she likes the lamp, she likes the lamp. I like that she calls it semi pornographic. Like there's yeah. nothing. It's the, it's the hear no evil, speak no evil, say no. Like it's the there's nothing pornographic. Wait wait, where are the coconuts? But they are definitely Maybe holding coconuts. The pornographic part. Maybe it's that they're depending where they're holding the coconuts. I don't know. And no, leering, they're leering. <laughs> I just want to. I want to acknowledge how like cheeky and small Lorelai looks like she's not trying to defend her actions necessarily she's just being like man mommy don't be mad at me mm -hmm. <laughs> she's just being, I think she's so cute in that part payback hurts. absolutely <laughs> hiding under the blanket like I don't know <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're back at the dance. Our friends have arrived. They walk in, and Louise and Madeline are so gross. Well, Louise is gross. Are these the girls who were hanging out with Paris in that early one? The ones in the bushes? Mm -hmm. Is it? Oh, okay, okay, good. I'm glad. I yep. wasn't sure because yep. yeah, they're they're very interesting. Can I first point out their fashion? Yes. I need to go on a fashion tangent here because. This entire scene, everything to do with the dance. We mentioned Suki earlier with her amazing Y2K fashions, but these chicks are still like, they're hanging on to a little bit of late 90s, like even like a few years prior. And they've got the crochet, the chokers. They've got updos with clips and butterfly clips, I think. And the like the the necklines they're yeah, all the scoop kind of neck like or yeah. spaghetti strap like super yeah tight. like sort of rectangular yeah rectangular something or other crochet their hair is all either up or it's like nothing kind of spiky to it. spiky things spiky, mm -hmm. Spiky. Mm -hmm. the the makeup <laughs> is, it's so like really really beautifully done with just tiny alterations for their personality to come through um I'm a big big fan of really looking into show styling for characters even when it's like secondary and tertiary characters how much character you can and personality you can bring out just in the styling of them so i love love watching that and for me this was just a hugely ah hugely exciting scene to jump into and just like feel like i'm like i'm part of it you know um and they do it with, with I, paris I too because her dress 
is a little bit frumpy, a little bit awkward. Like she's very conservative in time and like she's not very like fashion forward. And so you could her dress feels like a, a mother of the bride dress. It, not, it really does, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really old fashioned. It looks a lot more sort of classic, maybe late 50s, 60s, rather than like the cool, edgy, kind of early Y2K, new millennium yeah. stuff. It feels but not very, in a glamorous, like even like no. not like a glamorous rockabilly movie star fifties sixties colors, like a, <laughs> like a like a like a not nice olivey green. Yeah. <laughs> chartreuse. I don't know, it's just not. Yes, it's chartreuse, <laughs> and it's not flattering, and no. it just makes her look Lesser. like she got it at the thrift shop, but not a good way. It might be like her her mom's it might actually be secondhand generational whatever because that's that's a thing right in the upper circles the upper crust circles they they hang on to garments and they hang on to things of like i don't know i feel like went into a store that like is probably reputable but like just didn't know her way around didn't know what to do and was just like Mm. walked (laughs) and that's possible to have like girlfriends to help her out with this kind of stuff and i feel like she was there alone and just like bought something and it was like a or if there was anyone at because she doesn't yeah. know where to shop herself yeah exactly if there was anyone to help her out it would be like the staff at her house you know if she that's if it. she also has has house staff then like emily does then yeah that that's we get what more into like, trendy young folks we get more into the Paris backstory and situation later on. And I don't know if it's this season or later, but we mm. do get to like dig into Paris's situation a little bit more. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll get there. Louise is being like, ooh, what a dish. How tall are you? And she's being like really, really aggressive. <laughs> Whereas Madeline, on the flip side, is like, off in her own little world like your mom made that dress that's amazing first of all i love that despite paris hating her that madeline is like wow and interested and she's not letting paris's Mm -hmm. opinions like color her opinion as well Mm -hmm. in that way i love that Mm -hmm. and then she goes off on this like weird thought bubble about how my mom can't make anything she can make soup. She makes one soup. It's green and lumpy. And like, she's just not paying attention to what's going on at no. all. Is this a little we... ADHD representation? <laughs> I don't think so. I think it's too no. <laughs> far in the other dirt. Like, it's too, it's like very like, bimbo trope. True. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> so as, as an ADHD person, I uh, do not identify with what happens there. <laughs> Madeline. Fair enough. <laughs> Maybe somebody does. That might be happening in my head, but I wouldn't mm. be so like obtuse with like right. the situation <laughs> happening. <laughs> like mm. I wouldn't be saying it out loud. I'd be ignoring the gross stuff happening and then just being like, hmm. And then and Dean also thinks it's gross because then he like puts his arms around Rory and is like, Do you think I'm tall? Is it too tall? And they're just like cute. And Louise is just like, ugh, gross. Like, what do yeah. you think well, was going to happen? Right, yeah, exactly. Well, okay. This bit actually reminded me of uh, an interaction that I once had with my, at the time, very early boyfriend. Like, we had just got together. And a friend of mine, who is, was never a very good friend of mine, she met him. She wanted to meet him. And I remember them meeting for the first time. She thought he was the bee's knees and really cute. And she made it very, very clear how she felt and was just outright ignoring me and speaking directly to him like she had hands in her back pockets and like adopting this kind of cool girl stance and going so do you have any tattoos <laughs> and like <laughs> and that is the exact my... same thing like so how tall are you <laughs> That's, yeah yeah exactly yeah. and the the best part of this was my boyfriend at the time adrian shout out adrian he <laughs> he got to say no, but I have my nipples pierced. <laughs> just completely, like, just, just, just threw her for a loop completely. And I was standing there, like, "Yep, that's my boyfriend." <laughs> like, th- it was news to me, but also she had absolutely stunned me by how like overtly flirtatious and like she was being there. Yeah, he almost did a bit of a, a dean thing by like directing the attention eventually like more towards me and like, okay, we're the ones who are together. So Dean, I think in this moment, just like Adrian eventually was doing, he goes into like performing protective boyfriend mode. 
not mm. with pierced nipples, but <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I, I, I don't want her being uncomfortable in this situation, but I can tell she's, she's, she's not handling this. She's clearly not saying anything. How do I, how do I regain control over this and like put that other girl in her place? And yeah, and he literally, yeah, wraps his arms around her and he's like, what do you think? Am I too tall? And, and, and they make it about them kissing. Oh, well, when I'm in, when I'm in heel, or, or not about kissing, but they make it about them being, you know, close. And, uh, and she's saying, you know, when I'm in heels, it's, it's not so bad when she's not wearing heels. So, well, then I'll have to stoop, you know, like, yeah. so we can be close together and canoodling and like, great job. Dean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just truly don't understand what Louise expected. Like what he would just be like, yeah, you're hot. Bye Rory. What was the point of that? Anyway. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, who's, what's the other girl's name? Madeline. Madeline. Okay. Bless her heart. She's adorable and sweet. She's the one who, that other episode in the bushes, when she was in the bushes, she's like, let's just give up trying to like dig up history on Rory. And she's like, forget about it. I don't like this. <laughs> Can we not yeah. be in the bushes? Like, leave this alone. And then bless her heart. She's really, really sweet. She leaves the conversation and then turns back around again and just to compliment Rory's dress. With a yeah. genuine compliment of, I like your dress. They make her so aloof and such a bimbo, but she's sweet. And as much as she just kind of like follows along and does her own thing, she's not paying attention. Mm -hmm. She's not mean like the other mm -hmm. girls are. Like, so you have the slutty girl. Like, so they are all playing right. a different kind of role. And then you have the bimbo girl. And then you have the like really smart, ambitious girl. And they're all sort of like make this trio. The music changes for a slow dance. Uh, yes, because yeah, they're still trying to figure out how long they're staying and what yeah. they're doing. And so Rory's like, do you want to dance? And he's like, eh, not. and she's like a slow dance. So like, can we at mm -hmm. least get a couple slow dances in? And so the music changes. It's a slow dance. So they go to mm -hmm. dance. It's and Mazzy he, I, Stars Fade Into You. Okay. I didn't has, know the song. Uh, it, oh, it has become, I think anyway, the like whimsical alternative Y2K late 90s theme song it's so like strummy and sort of introspective girl it's it it, it is now hugely overused i think it's all over okay. tiktok you'll find it everywhere any like whimsy goth fashion practical magic witchy cool kind of y2k alternative girl it'll be fade into you i promise <laughs> okay good to know he asks if there if he can kiss her or if there'll be like a nun coming out to like smack him over <laughs> here. <laughs> and he's just like, I don't go to a Catholic school. And then they have this like really sweet kiss and the slow dance and it's really nice. And mm -hmm. meanwhile, Tristan is off to the side watching. You really see that he's super into her. And mm -hmm. like at first it does, like she said, it felt like she's later in the episode that it's like a game to him. And possibly it is just a game that he doesn't like losing. He doesn't like being rejected. He doesn't like being in the situation that he's in, that he has his eyes on a prize that he doesn't know her. They're not compatible in any way, shape or form, but he is right. livid. He's like so jealous mm -hmm. watching them dance. And then you've got this like little Aussie chick who pops up. She's got like just the faintest Australian accent. Does um, she? <laughs> Do you want to dance? And he's like, no. You want to eat? No. Oh, you want to go make out? Yeah, okay. And it just feels so like, ugh, fine, let's go make out. Like, it's, it's such a chore. And he's like, that's mm -hmm. the thing. Physical affection that you are giving me when I'm giving you nothing in return is the thing that I will walk away from the situation for. It's so gross. Back at the house. <laughs> I have two clips about this. We're going to play them together. Okay. <laughs> Emily brings Lorelai this toast. Mm. And I love everything that Lorelai has to say about this toast because she just doesn't hold back. The first thing that pops into her head, she just says it. And it, I mm -hmm. adore that about her. Mom, I think somebody already ate that. That is a mashed banana on toast. Okay. I used to make this all the time for you when you were a little girl. You did? Yes, whenever you got sick, I made this. Are you sure it wasn't the other way around? <laughs> But I just love that she's like, I think somebody already ate that. I like snort laughed. I was just like, <laughs> I thought that was such a good line. So nasty. But she does. So they have like a little bit later on, they have like a heartwarming moment. And then Lorelai decides to give it a shot. Hmm. Yes? 
It's even more disgusting than I thought it was going to be. Oh, it is not. Oh, my God. Horrible oh, work. <laughs> and that is, oh, my God. That is the most emotion, the most emotive, like, of Emily's face. That is, like, the mm -hmm. biggest expression that we've seen from her in the entire series so far. Yep. Yep. And so I have banana toast to try. No! <laughs> Mashed bananas on toast. This is the right. second version of the mashed bananas on toast because I had one ready for the beginning of the episode that we're filming right now. And as uh, we were talking, I was glancing over and watching it turn browner and browner and browner. Oh, and no. it was oh, no. so disgusting. And I was like, I can't eat that. So at one point <laughs> I texted my husband and I was like, can you make me another toast? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna eat that. I really wanted to. For science, I need to try. It. Um, okay, so it's not fresh anymore either. It's really mushy and soggy, but I'm gonna do it. I mean, it doesn't warrant the reaction that Emily had. Mm. It's not great because it's not like toasted anymore. So the textures are just like mush on soggy bread. Ew. So that's not great. Ew. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't awesome, but I really needed to do that for for us, for clients. <laughs> Take it for the team. <laughs> Better you than me. Like, yeah, that's like it's really gloopy, gelatinous texture mm. on like sponge. It was not not super. Okay, Ew. I did that. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> Thank okay. you for that science. Was, uh, Emily just wants to be needed so badly. Like, she's here to help. She wants to help. And so yeah. she's like, well, Suki left a burrito in the fridge. She's like, okay, I'll go heat it up for you. And she's like, oh, I'll eat it cold. And you can see Emily's just, like, crushed. She's like, okay, like, yeah. I'll just go get it. And then she's like, hot is better. And so Lorelai is, like, allowing the situation to be pleasant. And 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 Emily was just so excited. Like, oh, I'm going to go, like, microwave mm -hmm. the burrito. Like, she's so happy. They seem to be on the brink of being, like, of working all right together. They're enjoying each other's company. They're sort of, you know, meeting on the level of, oh, this toast is disgusting. And they're watching, I don't know what film, but it's a film with Barbara Stanwyck, who, as they describe, she's got a sort of a deep, husky voice. And I love that they meet at this point of talking about Barbara Stanwyck. They both seem to admire her in some kind of a way. They talk about her voice um, being, yeah, a deep, husky voice. And Lorelai takes a this rare moment to compliment Emily and say, you know, you've, you've got a bit of a Barbara Stanwyck, a deep husky voice, mom. She's like, what? No, no. Yeah, she absolutely does. It does, can sound yeah. like beautiful and warm and, and they're both tickled by this. Like they're smiling yeah. together, yeah. genuine smiles of enjoying this moment, enjoying what they're watching. Yeah. And it, Emily says, so you love sweet. teasing me, don't you? And Laura I was like, well, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then they're sitting down and they're watching TV and they're so happy. And so they're just like getting into this rhythm. I think that's what you said was like a rhythm of of a level of comfort, I think, that they haven't had in a really long yeah. time. Or they're allowing each other to enjoy. They're letting their guards down a little mm -hmm. bit. And then they do have this really, really sweet moment here. You know what, Mom? Mm. I made the dress. You did a lovely job. Thank you. With Rory and the dress. Thank you. Oh, so nice. Isn't it beautiful? Something I like in that scene and in a lot of scenes like this is that that moment of genuine tenderness and honesty happens without them looking at each other. And I think that happens so often in real life that you can really let out your truth and be vulnerable if you're not looking directly at the person. And you can have really, really honest conversations when your gaze is taken up by something else. When when you're not looking yeah. at each other, when you're both focused on something else, it opens it up, and makes it so much easier to be so honest and yeah, and, and yeah, and genuine. Or so some parenting advice is like, get them in the car, you know, mm. like talk in the car because if they're sitting next to you and they're sitting in the back seat, you don't have the vulnerability of looking straight into their eyes and mm -hmm. them feeling like exposed and raw. And you can actually talk to them a little bit better and get more out of them if you're sitting 
side by side. Yeah. And so, so they are being honest and vulnerable and comfortable and, and great, not looking at each other in this next scene back at the dance, we get the ultimate confrontation, staring each other in the eyes. We get Dean and Tristan meet. So Oof. Dean and Rory, they're sort of packing up thinking like, okay, are we going to leave? Are we going to head out? Okay. It's time, time to go. I should mention before this, we've had a nice, uh, a great reveal about uh, yes. uh, Paris and Paris's date, who turns out to be her cousin, Jacob, Yep. Uh, yep. who has the audacity to go and he's clearly seen Rory and Dean being like snuggly and canoodling and dancing on the dance floor. And the guy still has the audacity to say, to ask like, oh, is he your boyfriend? It's, uh, well, no, because up to this point in the episode, we've been avoiding the word boyfriend. We've been not saying boyfriend, girlfriend. This is still an up in the air thing. And so he goes ahead and asks for her number as if he has any kind of a chance, like we don't know who this guy is and it's only then when he reveals oh no i'm paris's cousin which rory takes quietly her she face. takes it into herself like brilliant this nice little tidbit of knowledge of this like thing she's she's got the upper hand but she keeps it to herself you know she's not gonna go and jump around with it she just says okay thank you jacob have a great night yeah paris just fully confronts rory on this and <laughs> manages to just mess this up so badly in her frazzled state, I suppose, thinking that she's winning this, this argument and like really being really intimidating in front of Rory when instead she reveals all and is she's loudly like overheard. Screaming she's screaming her. this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Loudly overheard by like everyone in their vicinity, everyone around. She's and like, so who she did you tell? The beans. <laughs> Yeah. She's like, yeah. nobody, you just told everybody. You just. Meanwhile, Dean is getting their coats because they're getting ready to leave. Right. On the way back, we have the conversation, Dean and Tristan. Uh, and they are both ferocious. We see Dean not so much meeting his match, but Tristan seems so set on picking a fight. Yeah. He's not He's there so to like, antagonizing. ask questions. That's it. Yes. Antagonizing. And and he he wants a fight. So he's he started with some with the words. They figure out who, who they are. Dean is, ah, so you're Tristan. Okay. Like I I know enough about you from Rory. I know she doesn't like you. So mind your own business and you know, scoot to the side. But Tristan physically stops him, steps in front of him, and is like, mm, no, you're not gonna get away with this. No, we we need to we need to talk. Rory has made her way over and things are heating up. Tristan takes the conversation to making quips and comments about Dean and class. So we were mentioning this earlier, this whole like blue collar thing. We're we're highlighting in a way, yeah, Dean's Dean's class, Dean's place as far as like on the societal ladder. And yeah, his language, everything that we've heard from him earlier in this episode, like when he arrives to pick up Rory, he just says, hi not how do you do or hello or whatever. He's got very casual language, the car honking, super, super casual, no upbringing, let's say. Oh, and, and is it Louise? Louise makes a comment earlier when Dean and Rory arrive. She says, uh, oh, he's not from the manor born, <laughs> which is such a weird <laughs> old fashioned way of speaking. And Tristan just goes in he's talking about oh have you got your your buggy parked outside oh you don't want to be late for for the barn raising yeah which is just i i feel like i think dean he doesn't so much take offense by these quips and jabs themselves i don't get the impression that he's actually all that concerned or insecure about his you know his 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 background or his upbringing or you know or his station i think it's more the, the fact that Tristan is trying to find something yeah. to come at him and jab at him. That he's um, using it as an insult when he's like, you you think that that's stupid? Like, I like I yeah. can't fight you. It feels like I'd be fighting an accountant. Like, the fact that's that... It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's the fact that he is using that against him when he's like, I think your life is stupid. You think my life mm -hmm. is stupid? Like, mm -hmm. and like let's not forget and so they start taking dean's character in like a bit of a different direction at the very beginning he was from chicago mm -hmm. like he's not some country bumpkin 
but no. they they start kind of building that narrative a little bit more as the series goes on okay. where they like take him away from the like he just moved here from chicago and like i don't know maybe it was rural chicago but it, <laughs> i'm like i know tristan doesn't know that and all he thinks is like he's a small town boy and maybe that's why dean doesn't take it personally they really try to make it seem here that yeah like dean is the like the country bumpkin mm -hmm. and tristan is the well-to-do high class highborn <laughs> i wonder there i wonder what actually if it is just rory that is at like at the center of their fight um i mean it must be it must be because they get violent mm -hmm. it turns into a fight dean pushes him out of the way pushes nudges whatever Tristan shoves him back and then it just explodes and it's a full on fight. And Dean gets really scary because he literally says the words, I'll kill you. Yeah, I did not like that. I didn't like that at all. I'm going to put that down to the time, like the Y2K thing. Maybe that kind of language, I feel like maybe that kind of language was on the TV quite a lot at that moment of like, he's my hero. He's my romantic hero. He's, he speaks in such dramatic terms. Maybe, but yeah, I didn't like that. He really, really scared no. me. I think it's also teenage boys. They, they don't realize the weight of their words quite as much and they're tough and they're macho and they like, oh, like they get really, I don't know if it's necessarily the times. I think it's maybe the age overall mm. because I feel like teenage mm -hmm. boys in a fight now would still say that. Good point. Um, yeah, yeah. Like he's like, cause I'll kill you idiot. And then he says like, you'll never come near her ever again. Like, it's not about Rory. Like, right now it's about them and their testosterone mm -hmm. and it's a pissing contest. It's annoying, first of all, that Rory's just, like, not saying anything. Like, she's trying to get them to leave. Like, she's trying, like, okay, let's go. Like, we're, you know, let's get out of here. But if, who does Dean think he is to say who can go near Rory ever, like, in the first place? Like, Rory's yeah. been perfectly fine. Just, like, I, I thought that was gross. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah the whole fight was gross his approach to the fight like i like that he didn't want to fight tristan i like that he would kept trying to like walk away but his like macho protector she's like my property that you can't come close to mm. like i i didn't like that at all but rory didn't seem to mind i think maybe because it's it's all adding up in her brain of like well who do, how does he see himself in my life like who, who yeah. does he want to be oh he will fight for me and defend me and protect to like oh what is that how do i feel about that i don't know yet and then i have to i really really wonder like regarding tristan what is it gonna take to shut him down because every turn she has shut him down she has not given him even a, a glimpse of like oh i might be interested or i might find you not at all not even a Nothing. moment not a drop so what is it gonna take me, I've never seen the series, remember? I've never seen the show. So I have no idea what comes out of this. But right now, I'm really, really wondering, like, what's it going to be? I don't know. See. After the dance, they're walking outside. Because they finally, you know, they were trying to leave. They make their exit. And they're walking through the snow. And Rory is so oblivious. Because Dean is like, he has a thing for you. Because she's like, I don't know what he like got into him kind of thing. And mm -hmm. it's so obvious that it's because he likes her. And mm -hmm. she's like, no, he doesn't. It's just a game to him. And it's like, dude, he just like fought me. He's possibly like, it's a school function. He might get like in trouble for fighting mm -hmm. at a school thing. He is so head over heels for her. Maybe not in like a, a real way, no. but in like a, an infatuation. I want her. Yes. Yeah. I want her it. for it's my own her. and no one else exactly. is allowed to have her. Yeah. 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 In this um, scene, the song playing in this scene is called 13 by a group called Big Star, who were a maybe few hit wonder in 1972. I'll just point that out. It is an absolutely beautiful song, acoustic guitars, Beautiful harmonies. Yeah, in case anyone was wondering. Very, very fitting Beautiful. for um, a Nick Drake loving Dean. And so they have this conversation about how Rory, well, she does say that she doesn't know how comfortable she is with like her boyfriend defending her honor and that it's like weird. Then he goes, oh, your, your boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> and then they have this back and forth where she's like, oh, no, I just meant, you know, like in the broader sense of the word. And then he teases her about that because eventually she's like, well, are you my boyfriend? And he's like, in the broader sense of the word, <laughs> which I thought was like funny and teasing. But then mm -hmm. he asks her like, well, do you want me to be? And she's kind of like, oh, I don't know. Like, no, and that's not what I meant. And then he's just mm -hmm. like, okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, <laughs> his his response. It. She she asks him, "Are you my boyfriend?" And he just says, "I am if you want me to be." Right. Which is again, it's this like witch, wishy washy watery thing. Like just state. You can even just say, "I'd like to be." That would be much more helpful than I yes. am if you want me to be. You know, just nah. <laughs> And then when she kind of brushes that off, he looks a little, he doesn't look like openly crushed. He's taking it in. And then she takes a step back and it's like, no, I, I do want you to be my boyfriend. And then he like breaks out into this great big smile. And it's like, why did you leave it to her? If you wanted this exactly. too, let her know, let her in. Like, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so, yeah, I find that that was really annoying where she has to do, yeah, do all of the emotional work to like make that happen. Very frustrating. And um, so they're walking in the snow, they're official, they're boyfriend and mm -hmm. girlfriend. And then they walk by Miss Patty's and see that the door is open. <gasps> and they're like, oh, Miss Patty must have forgotten to lock up and also left the door open. She just left. She's Miss Patty. She doesn't close doors. She needs to <laughs> close the door. They go in and they see all these pictures of Miss Patty on the wall. And mm -hmm. it's all of these different, like, she said that she's done everything in show business except light the hoop the dog jumps through or something like that. <laughs> Um, she's still my hero i need to say she is still absolutely my hero and my favorite character <laughs> they snuggle up on some beanbag chairs they read some dorothy parker book. yes mm -hmm. because rory's brought a book with her to the dance <laughs> and they fall asleep and in the morning 5 30 in the morning it's time for yoga all of the old ladies i guess that's how yoga was seen in in y2k and in, in mm -hmm. <laughs> it wasn't the like lululemon vibe no what it is <laughs> no. these days no uh, all the little old ladies come in at 5 30 to do yoga and they're all like oh they're panicking they're like flawless girl what do we do what do we do like it's, she's over here there. asleep with the bag boy from the market <laughs> yes. and so miss patty is like Rory, sweetie, it's time to wake up. And then Rory's like, what, Miss Patty? And Dean's like, what time is it? And she's like, it's 5.30 in the morning. She gets like, her <laughs> whole demeanor shifts. He is <laughs> the bad guy. Because Rory, oh, yeah. sweetie, my darling, sweetie girl, we love you and we know you. And who is this bad boy from the market that you're here with? And then pandemonium. Mm -hmm. Rory knows how much trouble she's in. And books it. She's like, where are my shoes? She's panicking. Dean is actually trying to be... I, I liked him here because he's Agreed. like, yeah. I'll go with you. I'm going to go with you. We're going to explain. He wants to shoulder some responsibility. And he's like, he's frantic about it. He, he's insistent on this. I wonder how it would have gone had he shown up with her. That's what I wonder. Yeah, that's that's what I wonder. Because cause I, I don't think I don't think she would have got the like tongue lashing that she did. No, I don't think would she would have, have just. Th thrown him out or would it have made the situation worse if he was there it might i don't know so lorelei's sleeping on the couch emily frantic waking her up like get up get up rory's not home and then the like fear and terror and like absolute like paralyzing just horror that she must be feeling and mm -hmm. so she's like going through the house she's trying to figure out she's calling for rory and emily is screaming at her the whole mm -hmm. time and it's just like would you stop it and she tells her she's like mom you're not helping me stop screaming and then it's like a 180 for emily and she starts just like getting after her she's gonna throw her life away the boy that you let her go to the dance with you let her run off to the dance with that boy the dance that she insisted and like mm -hmm. wanted rory to go to all of a sudden again it's like in the, the episode with rory's birthday parties where suddenly it's your daughter did this so all the yeah. blame is on Lorelai now. And she's just like screaming at her. And she's like, you've done some stupid stuff in your day. And I've held my tongue, which made me like, <laughs> yeah, okay. Have you now? <laughs> you sure right? about that? <laughs> and so all of a sudden, everything is Lorelai's fault. Like they first wake up and they're fighting. And, and Lorelai, at first, the first thing she said was, let's try to stay calm until we know what happened. That's her initial reaction. And had Emily not been there, that's how it would have gone. Yes. But Emily is there screaming at her, blaming her for everything, bringing up all of this stuff, saying that she's going to ruin her life, just like Lorelai ruined her life. And at one point, like, Lorelai, like, throws the coffee pot. This whole time, they're, like, screaming at each other. Rory's coming home. Rory sneaks in the house and hears that they're fighting. 
Like she's, they're just like literally like this scene was so well done. The acting oh, in this scene it oh. was so believable and raw and real. And it's just like the panic and the terror and the like, you know, a bad situation just brings out every single negative emotion and you want to find somebody to blame. But mm -hmm. Emily's horrible, horrible. And literally like six hours ago, it was like, you did such a good job. She's such a good girl. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it hurt, I, it's, hurt it, to it, watch. It's interesting to see how panic and fear comes out in both of them. Because like you said, Lorelai's initial thing is let's remain calm until we until we figure it out having emily there being like he's gonna get her pregnant she's gonna throw her life away i think that like planted all these ideas in her head and she was just so angry and she'd get angrier and angrier and angrier and she's defending rory she's like rory's not that kid she's a good kid she's smart she's not gonna let herself get in trouble like that and mm -hmm. that's not what happened nothing happened and she's telling her like mom like you're you way off base you don't know what's going on and Rory is hearing this because she snuck into the house. She's hiding. Emily storms off because Laura is like, if you're going to be saying that to me about my life, about my kid, if this is how you're going to be, get out of my house. So Emily leaves and Rory comes out and starts saying, mom, thank you for saying all that stuff to grandma. And Lorelai just rounds on her and she's just screaming at her too. Like, how could you do that to me? You're going on the pill. And Rory's just like, what? Like, what happened to trusting me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like, what happened to all that stuff that you said to grandma? And she calls her on her shit. She says to her, you would not be acting like this if grandma hadn't been here to see me screw up and yelled at you for it. Like, you're yelling at me because grandma yelled at you, which is mm -hmm. true, 100% mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. Because from this point, everything coming out of Lorelai's mouth is not about Rory. I, I don't think she's yelling about Rory at all. I think it's a, not so much a self-reflection. I don't, I wouldn't say a self-reflection because that almost implies that she's like learning about herself and she's wishing she didn't. No, I, I, but I think it's, it's, she's I don't projecting. know, maybe she is yelling. Projecting, projecting. That's exactly the word. Yeah. So I put myself in the horrible shoes of waking up and your kid is not home the first time they've gone out to like a big thing and like the things that would be going through your head car accident all of these other things like i and that just absolute terror and i understand like the second you see them it would be like how could you do this to me how could you put mm -hmm. me through this this was the worst moment of my entire life that part that element of absolute fear of god of like what happened <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I i've never been so afraid that part i get but the fact that she does turn it into like you're going on the pill, that's the part that isn't fair or just because that's the part where she is projecting. But she's like, Rory's like, you know, that's not what happened. I'm telling you what happened. Mm -hmm. You just fell asleep. Nothing happened. And so the fact that she just takes it that direction is I, because of the come down from Emily. I think Lorelai would have been extremely upset about the waking up and your kid's not there. Mm -hmm. But the whole teen pregnancy thing is because of Emily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And she even says, she's like, imagine waking up and you're not home and my mom is here. Because it's not just that. Like, my mom was here and we were both worried. It's like, my mom was here and she yelled at me about everything else. Like, it wasn't just that we were both here and afraid. Mm -hmm. It was that my mom being here turned this into like a multi-layered pile of terrible <laughs> stuff happening. It's really, it, we end quite uncomfortable, I think, because mm -hmm. for the first time, we end unresolved. Uh, no one resolution. of the things that I that I noted about episodes earlier in this, and that was part of the comfort of the show, is that like whatever issue we're facing, whatever conflict we have, it usually gets wrapped up and solved in some kind of way by the end of the episode. And for the first time, we, we're on edge at the end of an episode. Mm -hmm. And it feels bad. Oh. Yeah, right. I know. <laughs> And I remember when we were talking about you know, watching the show and this is what we're going to do. This episode is one of the ones that I, th I thought of that I was like, oh, oh no, I have to live through Because <laughs> this is not one of the ones that I, I come back to because it's painful and it just right. is hard to watch. There's just a lot of injustice <laughs> and genuine like fear and understanding and all that. It's just like it's not for, I like my shows to be generally light. And happy. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. <laughs> and this does not feel that way. I feel it in my like chest, even just talking about it, like my chest feels tight. Mm-hmm. So we'll have to wait and see. It must be so hard for you because you can't just watch the next episode. I know. Oh, this one especially. I wanted to just like leap in and be like, okay, so how are we dealing with this? <laughs> What's going on next? I don't know. Oh I have gosh. no idea. Yeah. So that's us. That's the episode. Yeah. We. We had a lot to cover this episode, we did. but I'm really yeah, glad we that we did. I have been Jenny. She's been Lisa. We have been the Belladonna Watch Club. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Hope you've been enjoying us making our way through Gilmore Girls. Um, I'm having a great time. Uh, ba, 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 I can't remember. I can never remember what our outro is. I do this every time and I have no idea what our outro is. Catch us next Thursday here on YouTube or wherever you stream your podcasts. And with all of that, let's say bye. See you next time. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>